so we were discussing uh, kagga visana sutta let me uh, take the sutta right so actually now we have come to the end of the sutta so this is the last verse that we need we have to discuss and uh, as you all can remember kagga visana sutta is based on several verses uh, actually explained by the buddha Uh, attributed to various Pacheka Buddhas. Actually, our Buddha explains, telling that these verses are uh, explained and these are uttered by Pacheka Buddhas at their enlightenment or at their whatever the achievement and uh, signifying their achievement or signifying their enlightenment. And uh, some are actually quite interesting and sometimes they are explaining certain aspects of their lives certain incidents that they have gone through, certain difficulties that they have gone through, on some occasions, certain aspects of the Dhamma that they explain. Now, today is the last verse. Hmm? So it is also a quite interesting uh, verse and quite uh, applicable to even today. So it goes like this. Bhajanticha sevanticha karanatha nikkarana dullabha ajjamitta now certain people are associating us being with us with the kind of an ulterior motive that is why they are with us nikkarana dullabha ajjamitta if a person is associating us Without such ulterior motive, then it is very rare. Atthatta panya asuchi manusa. So basically, majority of people are very much like uh, uh, impure and they are like shit. And uh, because they are thinking about their own welfare, thinking about their own uh, benefit, own profit, that is why they are associating us. Knowing this, eko chare kagga visana kappo, one will live like a rhinoceros horn. So this is quite applicable to today and not only to uh, the past, even today. Many people are like that. So they may be being with us, they may appear like friends. They are always talking with us or sometimes appreciate us, uh, expecting something which we are not aware of. I mean, they are hiding that. There are certain hidden tendencies or rather hidden uh, motives, hidden agendas, which is not uh, explained or which is not uh, uh, easily uh, retrievable. Rather, they hide that but appear like quite good friends. They are always like helping uh, us, always, always like giving us a hand but with an ulterior motive. Nikkarna dullaba ajjamitta. So that is where the true people, true uh, friends who are with us even with our difficulties, without, they are with us without expecting any kind of such uh, profit or benefit. Again, it's extremely rare. Atthatta panya asuchi manusa. In general, therefore, people are like, very much like shit. So asuchi. You know the term. So they are very much like uh, shit because they are always thinking about their own gain. They are using us to gain something. They are using our association to get some, say, reputation. They are using our association to, say, get some other material benefits or get a promotion or get kind of a social status or to become popular or whatever it is, they have certain ulterior motives. So that is why they are very much like shit. Their inner motives are quite vicious. They are not with genuine hearts. So knowing this, Eko Chare Kagga Visana Kappu. Knowing this, one may live like a rhinoceros horn. Now, the story behind this verse is also interesting. Uh, one time there is, was a king in the common Baranasi. And there, the king has many, had many wives, and again he had a large amount of ministers. 
unfortunately he went through a severe illness so when he was uh, going through this illness so the queens come together and they started to uh, in a way um, create the king but on the other hand the other ministers now they are always in search of money in search of gain in search of reputation in search of uh, say salaries etc now they found now this illness is quite severe so this king most probably won't recover and now he is quite weak as a result of that our revenue will drop daily so better we leave this uh, kingdom and find someone else find another king so what they did was they forgot this uh, they are king they left they are king and they approach another king and uh, they started to serve that king because they want more material benefits fortunately the previous king slowly recovered so once he recovered he was inquiring where are my ministers who where is he where is him so like that he was inquiring and then the others inform him now they have left this kingdom they are now serving another kingdom then he was little uh, you know disappointed but later the new king actually didn't give enough uh, remuneration to these uh, ministers so they become spread there so again they return back to the previous king now previous king now understood okay these people are always going after some material benefits gain and fame since they didn't receive it they came back now he want to really test is it true he is a wise king and he he was thinking am i coming to a wrong conclusion or is it their true nature are they quite optimistic or rather opportunist are they really with that kind of an ulterior motive they are associating me is being in this uh, palace or in this kingdom solely because of their material benefits otherwise they will simply go so the, he want to verify that now what he did was he pretended like again he got the sickness now the other ministers again they understood okay now king again afflicted with the serious illness so we better be again to another kingdom because there is no increments here there won't be much benefits here so we better go to another kingdom so again they left so after they left again the king recovered and uh, he again uh, sort of uh, spread the news now he has fully recovered now the ministers who left they haven't got enough remuneration whatever the gain and fame that they were expecting and again they returned now again the king was quite uh, uh, certain now they are very much like not the real good friends or real uh, loyal people but rather they are always going after these material benefits likewise several times king uh, uh, tested these uh, people and ultimately he was quite disappointed about their behavior he was thinking i mean these people are even though i treat them well they are always in search of something they are always try to grab something always try to going through some gain and fame they are not respecting either me or any loyal things or any of this but they are sim- simply going after these material benefits going after this uh, Uh, monetary benefits financial benefits so the king was quite uh, disappointed about their behavior now he decided to relinquish the whole his kingdom and he wanted to find a better way of life rather than being with this kind of people he thought of completely relinquishing the whole kingdom and became a monk and then he was practicing so as a result of the practice he became a pachek buddha now after becoming a pacheka buddha he was reflecting this incident now he was quite disappointed because of their his minister's behavior so that is why he left them all together and their behavior is quite unacceptable they are it is not ethical so he was he was thinking about it 
and he understood now this is the typical behavior of many people they are associating certain people expecting some material benefits expecting gain and fame expecting some uh, something with a lot of ulterior motives they are associating so if they are not getting that they simply leave they don't care whether you are treating them well or you are the king or you are the uh, person who looked after them or something like that they don't have such kind of a gratitude simply they want to uh, build their part they want to become rich either this way or that way that is the only thing they are thinking of and this is not uncommon today i mean there are many ministers there are many members either in the parliament or either in the another society either in the monastery or either in any other situation same same thing people are very much like this they have their own ulterior motives they are not showing it they behave like saints so they behave like they are really true genuine people but internally they are holding these kinds of kind of mean expectations so they are that is why they are associating that is why they are treating that is why they are greeting so all these things are very much from the marketing point of view they are doing but internally they are expecting something so in this sub subject actually we can discuss a little bit further about various friends because this is talking about uh, friends let me first talk about the bad friends so there are uh, four groups of bad friends or uh, go force in the guise of friends put the explain now they are sometimes called as anya dattu hara the who appropriates a friends positions now he he is something uh, always expecting something that is what actually we were just discussed uh, so he is trying to get something from the friend always he does something little but he expect a, a lot so anya dattu hara so expecting the friends benefits expecting friends positions that is why he is associated suppose the friend is a, a really wealthy person a well to do person another person is associating him because he is well to do now he, because he is well to do this can this person can the second person can survive so as a as a way of uh, getting something he is always associated if there is something that he has to contribute he contribute only a very little but he expect a lot from the other person so this is the person what we call as Uh, someone who is appropriating another person's positions and he is called anyadattu hara so he is a bad friend and on the other hand uh, a certain person is simply lip, doing a lip service he he tells okay i will give that i will tell that i will i will help you but only to the words uh, so he is kind of a person who who only has words doing kind of a lip service but never materialize it so his help never materialize he doesn't really help but he tell okay if you have come on that day i would have helped you but now i don't have maybe you can come on next month but when you arrive on next month still he has some reason to tell not to help you so likewise so he has lot of uh, uh, beautiful words but they are not real words they are not uh, he is not true to the words so he is called vachi parama and uh, whenever there is an opportunity or whenever you he is he has to help you he never help you he will he know various reasons to escape so that is the person who is called vachi parama or who simply renders lip service he is also a bad friend then there is another bad friend called uh, anuppiya bahani so he actually approves everything you do doesn't uh, sort of uh, guide you in the proper way rather he approves whatever you do either if you do wrong thing still he approves if you do right thing still he approves and typically he prays you again and again he prays you but when you are not present he actually do the backbiting he 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 actually with others tell that you did this you did that 
So likewise, he doesn't really praise you. Rather, he, he actually tarnish you. So this is the person called Anupya Bhani who flatters. He is also not a good friend. And uh, another friend, he is the worst in, in a case. So it, he is called Apaya Sahaya. Where he always take you into the wrong side. So if you he is grabbing you towards the usage of uh, say alcohol, say grabbing you towards using various other intoxicants, and uh, maybe if you are going after certain wrong people, then he is also supporting that. Uh, say if you are into gambling and all sorts of bad habits, he is again supporting that. So likewise, he is supporting the ruin ruining of yourself. So he is called Apaisa. So these are the four friends. Sorry, four uh, bad friends that Buddha mentioned. So they are appear like friends. So that is why it is difficult to recognize who are the really good friends, who are the ones who simply do the lip service, who are the people appear like friends. They are not the true friends. There are four categories of true friends also Buddha mentioned. One category is called Upakaraka Mitta, helpful friend. He always want to protect you. He, he is uh, protecting you when you are heedless. Assume that you are with something wrong and you, your behavior is uh, wrong. So he always want to protect you. He want to guide you. Uh, he wants to make you, uh, make pro your property also protected. Maybe your wealth protected. Maybe your children protected. When you are, when you are in a bad situation, he, he comes and help you. He's kind of a refuge for you. And if there is any need, he is ready to help you as well. Now assume that you are in, uh, in a bad uh, financial situation, he is ready to help you. So he's a upakaraka mitta, helpful person, helpful friend. He's a good friend. On the other hand, there's another friend called uh, uh, who shares one's happiness and suffering. So he actually reveals his secrets with you. And it's very much like a very trust, trusted relationship. He, he trusts you and you can trust him and he never reveal your secrets with another person and he shares his secrets with yourself. So likewise, a very trust-based uh, relationship and he guards your secrets and uh, he never abandon you when there is an, any kind of a trouble and uh, he is ready even to sacrifice himself with respect to you or on behalf of you. So likewise, kind of a very true friendship is there are Samana Sukha Dukkha Mitta. So he, he is ready to share all the ups and downs of life with you. He never leave you when you are in an unfortunate situation. So he is a good friend. And then there is the third category Buddha explained. He is a sympathetic friend. Anukampaka Mitta. So he actually uh, uh, have some sympathetic attitude towards you. He is in a better position. So he, he is having some sort of a sympathetic attitude in his himself. So he actually, when you are rejoicing, he also rejoices. And if you are in a misfortune, he, he actually wants to help you. And he, he sympathizes you. And uh, if there is someone dispraising you, he actually stops that. But if someone is uh, praising you, then he encourages that. So he is a kind of an anukampaka, a sympathetic friend. He is also a good friend. The last friend is very much the kind of the teachers, Kalyanamittas, who are in the situation of a teacher, who is called Attakai. He always appoints you the good path, the correct thing, what is correct, what is wrong. Uh, always wanting you to do the correct thing, be in the right path. So likewise, he is always... Uh, trying to restrain you from the wrong things and uh, put you in the correct path, in the correct thing, the wholesome path. And uh, if you are missing certain understanding, then he likes to teach you that. And, uh, and he tries to show you the correct path, maybe the path to the heaven or path to the Nibbana or whatever it is. So we can define it that way. So likewise, he is a person who always expecting something good to you atakai so he likes he points out what is good to you so he is also a good friend so likewise buddha explain uh, four categories of good friends and four categories of bad friends and particularly in this uh, verse this uh, bad friend situation is explained 
they are people are there simply they are always being with you but with a lot of ulterior motives if you are in trouble they simply abandon you but when you are in uh, good health and we are, you are with a lot of uh, gain and fame then they are around you because you have a lot of things and they are able to benefit from that but when you are in trouble they simply leave so they are with ulterior motive associating you so they are like kind of a shit they are not the true friends so knowing this that people are coming towards me not for my own benefit not to help me rather to uh, get some benefit from me knowing that let me live alone like a rhinoceros horn so this is the verse so this particular pachega buddha explain and uh, so this actually ends the uh, sutta nipata based this kagga visana sutta and uh, probably now we can take a different sutta from next time from next week and with that i like to conclude today's dhamma sermon now i like to get on to the question and answer session asrai bante yeah we have can you a little uh, talk loud fine i will increase the volume uh, uh, can you hear me now bante Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so we have five questions today. Yeah. First question, dear venerable sir, during the walking, this is a walking practice question. During the walking practice, I focus on my left and right feet and the sensations on the soles. I can feel the pressure on the soles and how the weight distributes. Hard and soft touches and also some hot and cold patches on the sole. I can observe the differences between the left foot and the right foot as well. Recently I noticed that even though these sensations are real and strong, I still verbalize the movements of the legs using the thoughts such as left leg, right leg, how the legs move, etc. The observations and very subtle verbalizations are both happening during the walking process. Much merits for your advice if I should increase the focus on the observations. to silent the mind and remove the subtle verbalization with metta that's the end of the question yeah actually answer is with you so basically if you want to go deeper then uh, you have to put uh, full strength to that full energy to that so you can't do that when you are verbalizing <coughs> when you do this many kirima the verbalization when you do that certain amount of energy being wasted there and you have to do uh, this mental verbalization but if you stop that so that energy also can be used to quiet observation so that further improves your understanding you can further uh, say refine your focus and again the mind will further uh, say concentrate because if you do some uh, verbalization then mind can't penetrate or mind might simply stay in a particular level without being able to further refine but if you are able to stop verbalization altogether then mind has the freedom to further refine so therefore you can of course uh, stop verbalization and simply look at the phenomena with a very silent mind then you are able to further deeply understand what is really going on question number 2 of 5 this is related to the dhamma sermon dear bande many times i have heard the argument that bare attention or just mindfulness or sati matra here now i am is wrong because it relies on i am from the onset and there is fully scale conceit in this concept and practice however last week for q and a question related to the dhamma talk you replied that self view sakkaya ditti is a more of a gross form compared to mana conceit and they have a similarity as a defilement and can be linked also you explain from the sutta that it is required to get rid of sakaya ditti first and enter the libera- liberation path before we get rid of mana at the last stage only at the enlightenment can this answer the question around here now i am since it is very clear that getting rid of conceit is systematic and cannot be done from the onset with metta that's the end of the question yes yes actually i agree with you because mana is a, a very uh, subtle uh, defilement of course it is available in the gross form as well that is why people are extremely conceited 
so that of also has to be removed but still very subtle form of measuring or uh, conceit is available so in order to remove that you need to have a fairly i mean uh, very refined mind very clear comprehension and uh, say fair amount of understanding an observation of the mind uh, very refined in a very um, say um, best way of observation now otherwise we simply can't recognize it now, now subjectivity on the other hand as we discussed last time so it is based on taking the whole thing as a one unit say so taking the whole body as a person taking whole uh, spectrum of feelings as a person taking all spectrum of uh, perceptions as a person so these are my thinking this is my say degrees this is my language so likewise we have so many other uh, different types of uh, perceptions taking whole thing as a person and then uh, various skills various uh, thoughts uh, various mental patterns so all, all these sanskara mental formations taking as myself and knowing part also taking as a person so during the meditation so certain parts of them are really challenged so for example during the dhatu manasikara elements meditation taking the whole body as a uh, person is really being challenged now what you don't have a kind of a compact body what you have is a kind of an accumulation of very subtle particles or subtle energies kind of a flux so there you can't consider a person exist so a, a huge impact a blow is there for the sakadhiti when you are going through this uh, disintegration or removing the compactness and again once you realize the impermanence so that will break the continuity so we thinking that uh, because when when something happens very quickly we we feel it like exist we feel like th there is something is very much like suppose there is a fire in, i mean there is a fire in at the end of a thread and you are rotating that thread then it appears like a kind of a circle but there is no real circle there but constantly this uh, fire point being located at various points all together when it is happening very rapidly it appears like a circle fire circle but when you are in improving your vipassana when you are furthering your vipassana so you will understand the impermanent nature so it's so very quickly things are arising and passing away when you are understanding this impermanent nature so you break this continuity so continuity also another kind of uh, wrong view or rather uh, something promoting the uh, personality view because you feel that i exist i was there in the past now i am existing and tomorrow and uh, next year also i will exist so that kind of a continuity is helping to develop sakkhayati but when you break that continuity understanding that constantly things are arising and passing away so you are giving another blow to this sakkhayati so likewise this vipassana practices actually helps to penetrate sakkhayati but when it comes to conceit it is more and more subtle so for that actually you have we have to observe the mind very carefully how we do uh, measurements measuring with respect to myself and another person quite often and how it is generating some kind of uh, unsatisfactoriness to the mind and how i making and mind making happens inside the mind so likewise very subtle aspects of the uh, defilements have to be observed then only the asvimana could be removed so even though i am telling you i also have it so don't think that i am an arahan so basically so this is the strategies that would they explain so the sakkhayati is more gross form the asmimana is even a more subtle form uh i was sorry one thing question number 3 of 7 this is a general question dear swami nanda from your so other venerable's experience are there any mindfulness practices that a practitioner who knows the basic techniques of mindfulness and who can establish mindfulness easily can focus on during a severe illness like covid much merits for your guidance that's the end of the question uh, can you repeat the last statement sir yeah um so 
the last sentence is, um, and who can establish a mind, uh, establish mindfulness easily can focus on during a severe illness like COVID. Right. That's right. the end of the question. So I think, I mean, if one has a fair amount of, uh, uh, Prasanna practice, so he has gone through a certain different kinds of uh, feelings, painful feelings before he, uh, get into this kind of a critical situation. But that is why Bhante Dhammaji is always emphasizing the preventive aspect of the mindfulness. So you are, at the moment, you are not in the trouble, but you are developing mindfulness. So that in development actually helps when you are really in the trouble. So you are well, uh, well trained. So this trouble time, therefore you can endure and uh, the various pains, aches that you go through, you can recognize without really identifying with them. So what really happens is that we are adding another personal view to these uh, feelings. There are painful feelings, but on top of that, we add a person. I am suffering. Why poor me? Why it happens to me? So always we are putting a self onto the picture. So that aggravates the situation. But if, but if you are doing, uh, say, Vipassana, say, Vedrana Vipassana particularly, so you are able to recognize various feelings as feelings. You are able to have a kind of a distance between the feeling and your observation. So observation is one thing. These feelings are another thing. So you are able to uh, have a kind of a distant observation, unattached observation. A painful feelings are there. That's it. You are not adding another personal view onto a, onto that. You are not adding additional pain onto that. You are not adding a mental pain to the picture. So that is therefore quite useful. So you are limiting your pain only to the body part, physical part. So if you are able to do such that kind of a practice, train yourself beforehand, before you get into a real trouble, Assume that you are today developing mindfulness. You are going through some Vedana Pasana. For that, you are using quite mundane type of uh, different feelings, painful feelings. Say, while you are sitting cross-legged after, say, 45 minutes, body aches. Rather than quickly gets up, you, you are maintaining your posture and try to recognize those painful feelings. Now you are training your mind. And uh, you are now probably able to understand, okay, these are merely feelings. I can watch them as an outsider. So assume now you are in a real trouble. Now you contacted COVID. Now your body is really in a trouble. Going through severe pains. You can try now to apply that training here. Different painful feelings are there. Let me look at them objectively. So therefore, of course, if you are practicing with Rana Pasana, you get a better chance, better opportunity uh, to um, endure these severe illnesses. Question number four of eight. This is a general question. Uh, dear Bante, last week I asked the question regarding what to focus on when something goes wrong. To quickly recap, I said that when something in day-to-day life goes wrong, I feel the emotions coming and I focus on the rising and passing away of them. And also sometimes I focus on how, uh, how the um, how the eye making is happening and I can focus on why that issue has become a problem for me such as I am better, I failed, etc. My question was which one should I, which one should I focus on? The emotions or eye making? But they advise that I should focus on whatever is prominent at the time and that sometimes I won't be able to pick and choose. My question today is how is this process related to mindfulness practice? Does it have any relevance to realization of Dhamma or is this a merely a byproduct? Much merits for your answers as always with Metta. Um, I think that's the end of the question. Yeah, actually it relates to the mindfulness practice, but not to the, say, the early stages, but when you reach Dhamma Nupasana, so the understanding different uh, levels of clinging is explained at the, uh, what you call the aggregates level. There are khandapabba, so they are the arising of the clinging aggregates are 
stringing aggregates are to be observed. Say here, actually assume that uh, say you have done something good. So it is something that already happened. But now you have a kind of a memory about it. And now you attach to that memory. You recall that memory. So this is an arising of, say, we can call it as a, say, Sankara Khanda, the mental formations. Now, when we are now attached to mental formations, so when such kind of clinging or grasping happens, if we are able to recognize it, we can let go of it without promoting it. So likewise, uh, so eye making and mind making always happens because of the clinging. So Buddha mentioned, so is it possible to, or rather encourage us, to recognize this clinging happens uh, with respect to the five aggregates. Either we are clinging to the form aggregate, either we are clinging to feelings aggregate, or we are clinging to perceptions aggregate, or we are clinging to mental formations, or we are clinging to the consciousness, so the knowing part. Different time, maybe different uh, clingings. So whenever it is happening, the clinging happens, grasping happens, if we are able to recognize it, then it cannot produce any I, it cannot produce any person. It cannot produce eye making, mind making, etc. So, therefore, it is quite relevant to mindfulness practice and it is available a little uh, later in the Dhammanupasana level. Question number five of eight. This is a question about the Dhamma sermon. Dear Bande, today's Dhamma sermon regarding the verse, friends without any motive are rare. In our mindfulness practice, also, there is a motive to achieve something in search of something. Will this motivation also relinquish at the end of our practice when we realize the ultimate truth? Is this something natural or something we need to be mindful and to contemplate about? With metta, that's the end of the question. Yeah, actually, this is a very interesting question. Actually, uh, explained by Venerable Anand. So, so he explained that uh, we can start with kind of a craving. So we have a desire to achieve, desire to become a Sotapan, desire to become a Sakadagami, desire to become an Anagami. So likewise, we have certain desire. So that desire actually motivates us. Still, I didn't get it. Still, I am not there. So likewise, kind of a Domanasa is arising, a little bit of despair is arising, but it motivates us. I have to achieve it. I have to do it. So likewise, kind of a motivation arises. But ultimately, the very desire has to be abandoned. The, so we are having a desire to end the desire in that sense. So there is a desire, but ultimately that very desire has to be abandoned. Therefore, it's a very tricky or rather than tricky kind of an interesting path. So there is a desire to achieve something, but as we are moving forward, that very desire has to be abandoned. Then only one can be fully satisfied or uh, completely contented with the present situation. So therefore, what you are telling is quite true, quite relevant. So even in the spiritual practice, so such motivation is useful, but later, so that very motivation, that very desire also has to be abandoned. Question number six of eight. This one is a general question. Dear Venerable Bhante, I dedicate the weekend to practice. I want to practice sitting and walking and listen to recorded Dhamma talks. However, I find I found that my body is sort of releasing tightness and makes me sleep after lunch. However, I am wide awake at night and need only a few hours to sleep. Your advice is much appreciated with Metta. That's the end of the question. Uh, uh, so I think it's a different life, lifestyle. There are certain people, uh, they, they can uh, practice during the daytime, maybe in the morning or during the evening. And some others, actually, they prefer to practice during the night. So it depends on the people. I mean, there is no definite answer that everybody should practice like this. We can't say so. But uh, you have to experiment yourself. What is the most suitable time for me? You can try during the morning time. You can try during the afternoon. You can try during the evening. And maybe you can try during the middle of the night as well. And there, if you found, okay, during the middle of the night, so there are no any sounds, no disturbances. My mind is also quite awake. Probably you can try that. No, there is no harm. 
uh, on the other hand so if you feel that uh, it's good to practice during the evening i have more energy during that time so you can practice like that so you have to explore what is the most suitable time for you and uh, it vary from person to person and again even for you during a certain period of time a particular time may be useful but after several years probably you have to adjust probably now the morning would be better or maybe the evening would be better so likewise even your own life things can change so you can't have a, a permanent answer so this for this kind of a situation things can change actually question number 7 of 8 this is a general question dear bante would you kindly direct where to find buddha one chair in the pitaka Thank you and much merits. Hopefully that makes uh, sense. Yeah. So Buddha once, uh, I think uh, I explained to you that. Hmm? So it is available in uh, Buddha Kanikaya. Let me give you. Uh, So there is a book called Buddha Vansa Pali in the Kuddaka Nikaya. Kuddaka Nikaya are the short discourses of the Buddha. It basically has around 15 books. One of it is called Buddha Vansa Pali. So I can give you the link to that, uh, which is actually available in the internet. And uh, say, uh, um, uh, it is available in the internet. and now actually what i am sharing is in singhala so hope you you can understand that as well so i am sharing that to everyone so you can recognize this is the buddha vansa pali uh, in uh, in the internet shared by tipitaka.lk yeah it is in buddha nikaya the shorter discourses of the buddha buddha pitaka okay thank you we received it uh question number 8 of 8 that uh, is the last one general question dear venerable bante in listening um to kamadhan i've heard in parallel parallel to the improvement of practice there needs to be hita hadima i wonder whether bante is referring as mind feels kala kirima feel down slowing the virya when need to be applied is this is this what's meant by that bante that needs to be fixed in parallel greatly appreciated and much much merits with metta that's the end of the question so if i uh, i mean understood the question properly chatu is he asking uh, there can be a kind of a disappointment kalakirima during the practice how to overcome that or is he asking something like that or is it is it possible is mm. it asking like that so i think it says so uh, what they say is um there needs to be a hita hadima so uh-huh. yeah and then they ask yeah. then they ask all that in like in comparison i guess is is that what what you meant by that hita hadima uh actually the re- kind of a disenchantment can happen so it is not the typical kind of disappointment say assume that uh, you lost your pet in the as a kind of a sorrow in yourself So this is not the disenchantment that we call in vipassana so that is i mean what we are now explaining is kind of a mundane type of disappointment because your pet has passed away say your loved one has passed away or the political situation is uh, hopeless so you have a kind of a disappointment so likewise this is mundane type of disappointment but uh, the the disenchantment nibbida what we call discuss in the insight meditation is quite different where it is based on the understanding say you go through say amount of uh, observation of various phenomena and uh, they are always showing their impermanent nature transient nature unsatisfactory nature non self nature now you are giving up now you don't want to hold it you feel disenchantment this disenchanted you feel that there is no worth of holding this you feel that this is not me or myself so because fair amount of understanding you have gained so that is the important thing so therefore 
the typical mundane type of disappointment and the the kind of a disenchantment what we are talking in the vipassana is quite different i hope you got the point if not you can raise your hand and ask the question um and so that actually ends all the questions today and we've got a bit of time so yes if that person or anyone else wants to ask a question um now's the time you can raise your hand um and we'll unmute you so we've got yeah about 10 minutes anyway up our sleeve so we will give maybe about 30 seconds if you want um you can put any questions directly to Dante Okay, good. No question. Yeah. Okay, so we can end. Um, yeah. I guess I didn't realize you 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 come from a retreat, so let's we can yeah, finish yeah. up quickly. Um, so with that, we'd like to end the program for today. Um, I first like to pass uh, to thank Bante and pass on um, all our merits that we've accrued um, to help with your journey. Um, and secondly, to the people working behind the scenes, seen and unseen, um, making to um, making this program happen and lastly to the participants because with that you we could not continue so with that i'd like to end there on sunday yeah there on sunday